So let us gather in prayer. And our prayer session this morning is entitled, In the Hands of God. And we're gathering in the presence of God and we're using the words of Martin Luther. Martin Luther wrote, rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him, be silent before God and let him mould you. Keep still and he will mould you to the right shape. So our opening prayers. Holy Spirit, our intention as we gather is to pray with one another. We ask you now to pray in us and lead us to be at rest and at peace in your presence. Come Holy Spirit, build us, fill us and mould us and lead us to pray. Abba, Father. Lord of creation, moulder of our fragile clay, shape us in your image. Spin us around if you must until we're dizzy. Hollow us out if you must until we're empty of all that is false and useless. Fill us daily with living water that we may carry your life into a world dying of thirst. Amen. And our first reading this morning is written by one of my favourite um, Christian saints, uh, St Ignatius Loyola. Um, uh, the divisor of the um, Divine Lectio Divina, which I love doing, of course. So we share this writing from St Ignatius. There are very few people who realise what God would make of them if they abandoned themselves into his hands and let themselves be formed by his grace. A thick and shapeless tree trunk would never believe that it could become a statue, admired as a miracle of sculpture, and would never submit itself to the chisel of the sculptor who sees by his genius what, can, what he can make of it, if only people would let themselves be formed by the grace of God. And a personal reflection from Pedro Arupe. More than ever, I now find myself in the hands of God. This is what I wanted all my life from my youth and this is still the one thing i want but now there is a difference the initiative is entirely with god it is indeed a profound spiritual experience to know and feel myself so totally in his hands and so we share a prayer by Charles de Foucault. Let us pray. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my spirit. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself, to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence. For you are my Father. Amen. And a personal reflection from Martin Luther. I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that 
I still possess. And so we share a reading from the Bible and from 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 to 8. And I'm reading from the Good News translation. Spiritual treasure in clay pots. God, in his mercy, has given us this work to do. And so we do not become discouraged. We put aside all secret and shameful deeds. We do not act with deceit, nor do we falsify the word of God. In the full light of truth, we live in God's sight and try to commend ourselves to everyone's good conscience. For if the gospel we preach is hidden, it is hidden only from those who are being lost. We do not believe because their minds have kept in the dark by the evil God of this world. He keeps them from seeing the light shining on them, the light that comes from the good news about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Or is it not ourselves that we preach? We preach Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. The God who said, out of darkness the light shall shine, is the same God who made his light shine in our hearts to bring us the knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of Christ. Yet we who have this spiritual treasure are like common clay pots in order to show that the supreme power belongs to God, not to us. We are often troubled, but not crushed. Sometimes in doubt, but never in despair. So we share a prayer from Cardinal John Terry Newman. Let us pray. Let us put ourselves into his hands and not be startled though he leads us by a strange way. Let us be sure he will lead us right, that he will lead us to that which is not indeed what we think best, not what is best for another, but what is best for us. We are all created for his glory. We are all created to do his will. I am created to do something or to be something for which no one else is created. I have a place in God's counsels in God's world, which no one else has. Whether I be rich or poor, despised or esteemed by others, God knows me and calls me by name. God has created me to do him some divine service. He has committed some work to me which he has not committed to another. I have my mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told it in the next. Somehow, I am necessary for his purposes. I have a great part in his work. I am a link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons. He has not created me for nothing. I shall do good, I shall do his work. I shall be an angel of peace, a preacher of truth in my own place, while not intending it. But if I, if I do but keep his commandments and serve him in my calling, therefore I will trust him. Whatever, wherever I am, I can never be thrown away. If I am in sickness, my sickness may serve him. 
If I am in perplexity, my perplexity may serve him. If I am in sorrow, my sorrow may serve him. My sickness or perplexity or sorrow may be necessary causes for some great end which is quite beyond us. He does nothing in vain. He may prolong my life. He may shorten it. He knows what he is about. Lord, I give myself to you. I trust you wholly. You are wiser than I, more loving than me, more loving than I am to myself. Fulfill your great purposes in me, whatever they may be, work in and through me. I am born to serve you, to be yours. Amen. And so we come to this part of the uh, prayer gathering where we share our prayers uh, for others um, and our own personal prayers. Um, so this floor is open to you, lovely people, to uh, just uh, share some, some thoughts and prayers at this moment. Dear Father, we've just read, sorry, we've just read that out of darkness the light shall shine. And we pray that we as individuals, our churches, and the church across the country may be that light, may listen to your guiding and obey, and be that light in the darkness that the country and the world are experiencing at the moment. Pray that we can step out and pray for this Sunday at, at West Orchard and the Flower Festival outside the church. And just that we can reach out to the community and let them know that a rainbow is a sign that God is with them. In your son's sake, amen. Lord, we pray for this uh, continued um, crisis and virus that plagues our world and our country. And we think of those countries that have tried to emerge from whatever lockdown they've imposed and yet have uh, become aware of a second wave of infections. Lord, we pray for patience and we pray for a carefulness throughout the world and also more importantly of to ourselves of course in our own country and in our own communities that we are patient and that we heed the governments and the scientists warning so that we don't get um, an increase in infections once more we hold before you the town of Leicester uh, who will be held back from lockdown and held in lockdown for a little bit longer as they experience an increase in infection. So we pray for Leicester and we pray for patients there and anywhere else that might be experiencing a rise in infections. Lord, we pray for an end to this virus and we pray that we overcome it and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, no more prayers to share, then we'll just close this little prayer session with a blessing, and it's a Celtic blessing. 
May the God of strength be with us, holding us in strong fingered hands. And may we be a sacrament of his strength to those whose hands we hold. May the blessing of God's strength be upon us. Amen. Amen.